Welcome to r slash choosing beggars, where a beggar demands that OP hand over their inheritance. Our first post is from Chunky Monkey. Dear Blank, on the 20th of October 2017, you applied for a senior developer position involving the following technologies, Python 3, Flask, MySQL, and Erlang. During the interview, it became immediately obvious that you were unfamiliar with Erlang even at a junior developer level, let alone an experienced engineer of distributed systems as your application claimed. As a result, Blank is requesting the time consumed by your interview be remitted in full. Please see below for the costs incurred. You wasted two hours of the head developer's time, which is worth $110 as well as two hours of the head of HR, which is worth $100. And finally, two hours of the owner's time, which is worth $200. In total, you owe us $410. Please pay the above cost to the following account before the 20th of November, 2017. If the amount due is not repaid by the date specified, the issue will be taken to VCAT as a matter of principle rather than cost. Thank you. On that note, I am a YouTuber with 900,000 subscribers, which makes me super duper important, and my time is very valuable. So if you've ever posted a comment on one of my videos, you are wasting my time. I expect each and every one of you to PayPal me $10 by the end of the week for each comment you've made on my channel. If you don't, I'm gonna have to take this up with YouTube as a matter of principle rather than cost. Our next post is from Hexum Zexy. My coworker had a baby girl last week, and to celebrate, he took us all out to lunch. My other coworker ordered an extra steak and two slices of cheesecake to take out. When some of us asked her why, she said it was because it was free. She even knew Blank was paying. What I don't understand is how this choosing beggar can possibly think that she's gonna get away with it. If I were the first coworker in this story, I would have just not paid for the steak and cheesecake because seriously, screw that lady. Our next post is from Seanad. Sorry, I can't pick up the phone right now. I'm in a lecture. You called a few times? Is everything okay? Now that we spoke for a bit, I was gonna ask for a favor. Oh yeah, that's fine. If I can do anything, you know I will. What's up? I know that Granddad left everything to you. I want some bits. Oh, of course. That's really sweet. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. There's some legal bits at the minute, so I can't really take anything out of the house until it's all sorted, but I'm sure I can get away with finding some sentimental stuff. I was actually wondering if you wanted some of our old toys for your boys. He kept everything in the attic. There's also a good few thousand photographs up there, and I'm planning to go through them and scan them all, make a USB copy for all the families so everyone has them, and then make albums out of them so that people have their own originals too. No! My sons don't want toys that are old and used, and I have my own photos. I was actually thinking about the washing machine, as mine is five years old and his is only a couple months old, and also the fridge freezer because they are both black and go with my kitchen. Also, I was wondering if I could have some money to get a new bathroom? Okay, I'll see if someone else's kids will want the toys. It'll be a shame to see them never used. It's a shame about the photographs as they got right back to 1940. Unfortunately, due to the legal stuff, I can't really move any of the large goods at the minute. I'm not sure if you've been told the money situation, but I don't have anything at the minute. I've been thinking about it and I'm planning on buying 5k in premium bonds for all the great grandkids once the house was sold. Whatever's left over, I was going to use to help with my degree, but I'm sure we can come up with a plan to get your bathroom sorted if we need to. How can you not move stuff when my dad and Uncle Blank have gotten loads? I'll have one of the TVs then, but I want one that's at least 50 inches. My two boys don't need premium bonds to sit there. Give me the money for both of them and I'll make sure they spend it properly. I can't believe you would waste money like that. You don't need help with your degree. You have a student loan. What do you mean sorted? 
Look, Blink, I can't move anything big because of your dad and Blink's actions and the new will. It's legally complicated and I'm not about to take actions to jeopardize myself. The idea of the premium bonds was exactly so it does sit there and when they're old enough, they can access it and spend it how they want. I don't see it as a waste. You know Granddad loved family more than anything, and I think he'd be proud to see the younger ones with a head start in life. Yes, I have a student loan. It doesn't mean I get to live comfortably or with ease by any means. My degree is hard, and if I can concentrate more on my studies with less financial strain, I believe that to be a good thing. Well, if it's in a state of disrepair and you need one, I'll help. I'm not in a position to right now, but I will be and we can agree to some kind of loan if that's what you would like. How can it be complicated when he gave everything to you? Just drop it at my house. I can't believe how selfish you're being. It was your choice to go to university, so you should have known you'd be poor. You can't be high and mighty just because you're going to be a doctor in 100 years time. How dare you say my house is in a state of disrepair? You're in a state of disrepair. You should be a better cousin. You're a terrible, selfish person. Dad was right. You manipulated Granddad into giving you anything you wanted and caused him to get dementia. I don't know how I still believed you would be a good person after all this. It's funny how people behave when there's inheritance involved, isn't it? I thought you were better than this, but you're just showing your true colors. Yes, Choosing Beggar, I agree. It is funny to see how people behave when there's inheritance involved. Our next post is from Mind Pattern. Right, I'm getting onto Blink today and changing my number. Don't message me again. Your call. Yep, it is. Don't change your now TV password until Game of Thrones is finished, please. Then feel free. I changed it yesterday. The audacity. F right off, you grunt. Lol, yeah man, you won't be able to get hold of me now, see ya. Are you serious? You're blocking me out of your life, but still want to use my Now TV subscription? <laughs> hey buddy, F you, but before you do, please give me some free stuff. Our next post is from Hair in a Suit. Yesterday, as tradition, I made a huge Mother's Day barbecue dinner for my wife, my mother, and my mother-in-law. Turned out amazing. My wife posted all kinds of pictures on Facebook and Instagram. Last night, while my wife was at work, my brother-in-law called her and asked for something to eat. Now, I need to explain about my brother-in-law. He's the most irresponsible piece of garbage I've ever met. He drives a $60,000 sports car, yet he's homeless. He doesn't have enough money to eat, yet he always has a pack of cigarettes and a bag of weed. He's the only one to blame for his problems. Both my mother-in-law and my father-in-law recognize this. That's why he is no longer welcome in either of their homes. But my wife will always have a soft spot for her baby brother. My wife called me after she talked to her brother and told me to fix him a plate. When he came by, he reeked of weed and had a fat joint rolled up behind his ear. He was complaining that he had nothing to eat for the last two days. Lucky for him, I had a whole pot of spaghetti in my refrigerator that needed to be eaten before it went to waste. I told him to eat his fill and then he could take the leftovers with him. He didn't want the spaghetti, he wanted the leftover barbecue, which I was not going to give him. When he started complaining, I gave him a reality check. I reminded him that he was 22 years old and it is not my responsibility to feed a grown man. I reminded him how when I first married his sister, I was making less money than him and was supporting a family. I told him how my family was never homeless and never missed a meal. Honestly, yes, I did give him a hard time, but I would have told my own brothers the same thing if they were in this situation. He left without eating anything, and he called crying to my wife. I had to hear all about it this morning, and now I'm in the doghouse. Our next post is from Professor Repent. This is an online dating profile that someone matched to on OkCupid. What I'm actually looking for. Daily showers, daily teeth brushing, 
less than three intimate relations. No tattoos, no nose rings, no neck chokers, no short short hair, no neon colored hair, no fatties, no smokers, no druggies, no missing teeth, no roasties, no cougars, no divorcees, no long distance relationships, no healthcare workers, no physiotherapists, no single moms, no gold diggers, no heavy makeup greater than one millimeter thick, no plastic surgery, no LGBT, no degenerates, never sent nudes by phone or internet, no STDs, no BDSM, no polygamy or open relationships, no one night stand or random sex, no pole dancers or sugar babies, no call girls or escorts. No scrubs, no yoga, no meditation, no social media addicts, no Canadians, no travelholics, no vegans, no Harry Potter, no communists, no male friends, no Disney. Seriously, time to grow up. No rap music, no overly religious, no dancing, no Game of Thrones. Go watch a history documentary instead of this fictional rubbish. I like to imagine that somewhere out in the world, there is an absolutely gorgeous 10 out of 10 millionaire supermodel who is crying into a pillow because she meets all of these requirements, but she's a Canadian, so therefore she can't date this absolute catch of a guy. Our next post is from Lilitco7. I never thought I'd post here, even though I have a number of entitled family members, but this couple was on another level. Non-relatives who lack common decency really irk me more than entitled family members. As with family members, at least they can be mistaken into thinking you owe them something due to blood relations before you correct them. So here goes. I live on the west coast of my country, and to get to the east, you can buy a plane ticket or embark on an almost nine hour train journey to get to the other side. Usually, I opt for the night train as it allows us to get some sleep. So I booked the ticket for me and my family. I packed what we needed and then some extras of some items, as traveling with children means you have to pack an extra pair of clothing and extra sundries, etc. We couldn't fit all of us into the two sleeping cabins, as there weren't enough cabins on the train when I booked, and we decided my husband had to sit in a chair with the other passengers for the entire journey. He was fine with it. His coach was only one away from ours, with the dining kiosk in between. Before settling in, we had a light meal as a family in the dining coach. There were a few people there, some just passing through to buy snacks and some hanging around a little longer. There was another family with us there, boyfriend, girlfriend, and their two-year-old child. We got talking and the father moaned it would be hard to travel with a child, while the mother asked me for some nappies, which I gladly gave her. Then, a moment later, she realized she had forgotten some snacks, so I gave her the sliced apple and carrots that I had extra. She also got to see some of the stuff I had packed for the journey as I was looking for the nappies and the snack for her. We usually buy a one-time use box of earplugs for the children as the ones the train provide aren't always, um, new. And it's better than giving the children the better quality and more expensive ones. My husband told the father he could have a pair of ours as there would be an extra pair after everyone had received theirs. He declined and asked if he could have my husband's, which were more expensive noise canceling and molded earplugs, as the trained ones were probably dirty and my youngest kid had played with the box and he didn't want to touch it. Naturally, my husband said no. He turned to me and asked if he could have mine as I was sleeping in a cabin and didn't have to listen to his toddler crying. I said they could have the one use pair, but not the expensive ones, take it or leave it. And I start to leave. This is when the mother turns to me and asked if she could have, yes, have, not borrow, my youngest child's blanket as they are more or less the same age. The train provides thin fleece blankets and a blow up pillow type of thing. I gritted my teeth and said no. We settled in the cabin and fell asleep. Three hours into the journey, I hear knocking on the cabin door. Alarmed that maybe something happened to my husband, I opened and I see the mother standing outside. She asked if she could have those earplugs, the expensive ones, as her son had more or less nonstop cried and fussed and her boyfriend couldn't take it anymore. I said no and told her I was pissed that she woke me up for something that was her problem and she could easily have avoided it if she had packed in advance. She got angry and said, wait till I tell him about this. Five minutes later, there was knocking again at my door. It was the boyfriend. Quite rudely, 
Hard to translate with the exact translation into English. He told me that I had two options. Give him the earplugs or give up my room so his son could sleep with our kids as he was used to sleeping in a bed and their seats obviously weren't a bed. I shut the door in his face. A few minutes later, there was more knocking. I opened and both of them stood there. There was some screeching on her part, which alerted the conductor and ticket checker and other passengers. I sent a text to my husband to get here quickly. The conductor calmed the couple down and explained he could give them another pack of the fleece blanket for their kid and that they just had to make do with what they paid for, the seats. When my husband arrived, the father went from angry to calm and he asked again if he could sleep in the cabin with our children while I took his seat or that we give up my bed for his son so that both him and his son could get some sleep. His girlfriend tried to sell this idea to me by saying I would be close to my husband because apparently we are a high school couple and need to be next to one another at all times for life to go on. We declined both their offers. The conductor gently tried to nudge them away from there and even then she turned around and said, then just give me your blanket so that my son can at least sleep in a good blanket. The conductor thankfully got them back to their seats after threatening to throw them off at the next stop. There were no more disturbances for the rest of the journey. That whole thing about how you have two options, what about option number three, telling the conductor that you, an adult grown man, are trying to sleep with two minors? That was r slash choosing beggars. And since my subscribers have also been choosing beggars by demanding that I make a podcast, I have to oblige. I've started converting my videos into podcasts, which are available on Spotify, Google Play, and other platforms. You can find the link to my podcast down in the description of this video. Making these podcasts on top of my videos does take up a lot of time. So if you like my content and want to support me, please consider hitting the join button right next to the subscribe button on my YouTube channel or making a monthly contribution on my anchor.fm profile.